Alrighty, hey you guys, hey, so happy spring, we are in spring now, isn't that awesome? Getting out of winter is always a great thing, and more opportunity for you to get out and photograph, because there's a lot more light now, so don't let me hear about you don't have any time to photograph. I get it, in the middle of winter it can be challenging, especially for you guys in the north, you know, you might have a limited amount of light, but now we're now we're into a lot of light. You should be out there photographing. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Jeff, good to hear from you again. And Gear from Norway, speaking of lack of light in the winter, that must get really old. Wow. What do you get? Like a long, long, long dusk is what I've heard. Um, anyway, I'm glad, Gear, that these are helpful. We're going to talk about some sort of deep-seated deep things here in a minute, so stay tuned. Niagara Falls, yeah, J.A.M., okay. Well, listen, guys, uh, let's get this uh, show on the road here. I'm Mark Silver. I'm a photographer and educator in Carmel, California. And before I go any further, I want to remind you <laughs> to subscribe and enable the bell, okay? Because then you won't miss any of our shows and we're really we're really doing a lot of stuff by the way i want to remind you before i even talk about bay photo if you're not on my instagram mark silver you should be because we are really ramping up the content you'll see stuff coming out pretty much every single day short uh video tips i'll go back here you know there's my handle short video tips are three times a week uh, lots of stories. I have somebody who's helping me design those and also just photographs with information. And you, we have a chance to have a conversation on that. So please do follow me on Instagram and hang around there. Okay, let's talk about our, our good friends at Bay Photo Lab and see what they can do to help you. You know my mantra is to make prints. Well, what do we got here? Tabletop prints. These are different examples of things that come in a stand. That's kind of cool. There's your dog and wedding pictures or whatever you want. You can make those and 20% off on there. Cool. There it is. What else we got? Wood products. I have never done this, but that looks kind of cool. These are little boxes and things. Actually, I don't know if you can see that, but that looks like a flash drive there kind of cool you can use it for your business you know what somebody sent me this uh, setup here and I've still got it to this day a company that wanted my business sent me a, a wooden box with my studio name on it and a flash drive that was pretty cool and those are also 20% off and metal prints 15% off those are super cool you can hang them on a wall um, you know just pick your photograph and these these are good until what's today 24th that's today so you guys better hop to on some of these uh, after the show order something and as always you'll get 25 percent off on your first order from bay photo lab so hop over there okay let's talk about uh let's get me into the picture here let's see there we go boom this is the forward to the book here on composition that I wrote a couple of years ago. My goal with this was to give you guys a recipe book. I had a lot of people struggling with composition. I myself had never really stopped to figure it out. So this is a recipe book. You can thumb through this book or you can put it on your iPhone or your smartphone, like in the case of the PDF here, and you're out struggling what should I do because I found something I think most photographers generally have a vocabulary and I'm not kidding I'm not talking about seasoned pros I'm talking about the average photographer has a a visual vocabulary composition vocabulary of about five now imagine if you had five words that you could speak there's many languages I could speak about five words Japanese, chocho, -cho. uh, 
what is the butterfly? Arigato. I know, I know, I could probably barely come up with five words. Um, so I can't converse in Japanese. I can barely, I can carry on somewhat of a conversation in Spanish, but I get lost pretty easily. But you guys need to broaden, continually broaden your composition vocabulary, and that's the point of this book. Which, by the way, you can you can get this as part of a bundle if you want with my main book, Advancing Your Photography. Jared can put a link in there. Uh, you can get this as a PDF, and it's a good idea to put it on your phone. I have a composition field guide that will be coming out pretty soon, too. That's kind of cool. Let's talk about some important things before you even get into what should you compose. I want you to ask yourself some questions. These are some big philosophical questions. Like, who are you as a photographer? You can even back that up. Like, who are you as a person? What, what, what's your goal in life? Where are you going? Uh, I actually dropped out of art school because I couldn't answer that question. What am I doing this for? And I decided, this is a whole story, which I don't have time to tell you, but I decided to take a year off from college and go find answers to that question before I moved forward. And it took me a lot longer than one year to figure that out, by the way. <laughs> but when I did, I re-entered the world of photography and I had a purpose behind it. I found what it was for me and it's not necessarily gonna be your answer, so I'm not even gonna tell you what it was for me. But I want you to think about it. What am I doing this for? And in each shoot, you should be asking yourself that question. Don't go on automatic, like just click, click, click. That's what I wrote about in this forward to my book here. I talk about um, really the, the burning desire that we've all had going back all the way back to cave paintings here. And Horace the Roman poet said, a picture is a poem without words. I love that. I love that. So this is a cave painting from about 6,000 years ago in South Africa. And it's a story. You know, what happened? Somebody ventured out of the cave, saw these mastodons, and wanted to come back and tell their tribe about it. So instead of just verbally telling it, they made a picture and that our desire to tell stories goes back even much further than 6,000 years. I mean, recorded history goes back ish 10,000 years. If you really dive deep, we can find some things from about 10,000 years ago. You know, we have the Egyptian era 5,000 years ago. We have, you know, we come up to 2,500 years ago. That's fairly well documented and recorded about Buddha, for instance. But these stories in picture form we have on cave walls, they're so important. What's the difference between the guy who saw these mastodons and said, I got to tell you guys about it, and you with your camera? You're just, same deal. You're telling a story. Big breakthrough occurred in a in the early 1800s, about 1835 is when the first photograph was made. This is a daguerreotype made in 1845. One thing you got to realize is it took a really long exposure. The children that you see here had to hold still for maybe two or three minutes. The average daguerreotype exposure lasted anywhere between 50 seconds and 10 minutes. Imagine the modern child holding still for 10 minutes. I don't even think it's possible. But this is a remarkable photograph. It's really cool. It's, you know, it's got a very clean composition here. Little girl's elbow there. They're standing very still. You can feel that, how stiff they are, but that's part of the process. Then we jump forward. This is a huge breakthrough in, I guess it was around uh, 
Eastman Kodak was formed in 1888, but I think the box camera, the Brownie box camera came out early 1900. And that was, you guys, enormous breakthrough. The daguerreotype, the technology behind that was just overwhelming. You had to have your your equipment right there to develop it. Now we have a box camera that you could take these rolls of film to the drugstore and have them develop. This was the iPhone of the day. Huge breakthrough in storytelling. And then, of course, we come to the iPhone. That was the next... I mean, there are a lot of things in between, but that certainly was a huge breakthrough because everybody has one of these. Everybody's got a smartphone, right? You guys remember, like I remember, these phones, not this one, before you could get a, a photograph out of them. I had those early Motorola's that looked like, you know, a field, uh, field operation walkie-talkie. So it's something that you just don't want to take for granted that we We've had this deep heritage of telling stories. I want you guys to think about that. What am I trying to do here? Composition is simply a tool to help you get there. <clears throat> and I have lots and lots and lots of examples in here of various tools that you can use. The book is broken into two sections. One is composition tools that I dug out of various different places, like this one with Bob Holmes. I love this. Frames within frames, you've heard me talk about that. Uh, the deer being a portrait. Uh, using your points of third, not rolls of third. Using leading lines. I love leading lines. Uh, one thing you should never really... So here's an example. I'm walking on this road with a girlfriend at the time. She, we were going to saddle up her horse. I had a camera and I said, you keep walking. I gave her direction. Don't... Don't ever be shy about directing your subjects. And your subjects are anybody who's with you. They are fair game. Look at art. This is a amazing, looks like a photograph. And it's from about, you know, 1771. We found this at the Rijksmuseum, which I love and dearly thank them for letting me use their images. So there's all sorts of stuff in this book. Now, the second half of the book, we get into composition in terms of, uh, I'm still in the first half here, getting low. And from this is an example of John Todd of shooting low. It will emphasize the action. You've got all these tools, but let's go forward here. Boom, 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 all the way. This is a cool photograph. I'm going to talk about this for a second. This was at the Legion of Honor Museum in San Francisco. I think it was actually the de Young. I might have had that wrong. I was uh, in, in art school studying photography and I had my Leica camera. I found, I was going around the museum and this woman just stopped right there, turned towards me and posed with her two children. This is called three-point composition. There's something very interesting to the eye about three points or more. It could be four or five, but we call it three-point composition because minimally it's three points. And there's something very pleasing and balancing. You can kind of feel the balance here with the mom in the middle and the two children. And these are just tools, you guys. You want to have in your toolkit because you're going to go out and say, oh, wow, there's a leading line. Or that's that's a diagonal line, or that's three-point composition, you know, or that's a mood line. I wanted to show you some examples of mood lines. Zoom, 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 all the way through the book. Ba 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 ba. All kinds of stuff in here. Blah ba 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 ba. Boy, am I zooming past everything. Telling stories. Okay, part two. We get into mood lines. Mood lines are very interesting because they. They give you an emotion that goes along with this active line, for instance. So these were lines that were actually isolated. I give a little introduction to this in here. Um, <clears throat> by not a photographer, not necessarily a, an artist, 
but um, he was actually a designer of gardens. In very interesting. So John Ornsby Simmons is the one who actually made these mood lines, and he did a lot of study to come up with these things. This is one, if you have something that follows this mood line, it's going to immediately represent activity and action, which, of course, this does. This is a fellow student, fellow mountaineering student, going over a river in Wyoming. And obviously, it's very active. You see the water rushing below him. You see the angle of the ropes that he's, he's going on. And that immediately gives you the feeling of activity. Now, in contrast, the way these are presented is, is a, a pair. So we have on one hand, we've got activity. And on another hand, we have a straight line that says things are very passive and calm and tranquil. Now, if you're going to take a photograph or make a photograph of your action sports and you go out and you shoot Lake Tahoe here, everything is flat. You're not going to portray that feeling activity. You're going to, fa you're going to portray a feeling of being very passive. So it's good to know what each one of these mood lines says because you're, you're telegraphing an emotion before your viewer even gets into it, what's this all about? They get hit by something and they don't even know it. It may be subliminal, meaning below the surface, but there's a feeling they get immediately. Just like in music, you hear a chord, it can strike something in you, a moodiness, dark feeling. You know, that's done in movies. Before we even see the visuals, we hear this, heavy chord, you know, and you go, something's about to happen here, right? Or it's very light. You feel like, oh, beautiful day. Same thing in your photography. These are all just methods of communication. This particular mood line communicates something being strong and structural. This is the ferry building in San Francisco captured with an iPhone and you feel very strong you feel there's structure there so I want you guys to think about these things but more than think do and follow Yoda's advice there is no try or how does that go Jared you probably can spout it out faster than I can there is no try or do, do it's or do not there is no try thank you Jared boom say it again do Say or do not. There is no try. Okay, that's our friend Yoda. It's really our friend uh, George Lucas. Thank you for his philosophy. My goodness, did he communicate a lot of philosophy through his films. But you don't want to just fiddle and think. Go out and do it. There's, there's nothing that you're going to get caught up in if you don't, if you don't do it, you're going to have missed out. Non-structural, fluid, and soft. This is what this is communicating, isn't it? So those are sort of some ideas I want you guys to employ. And I want you to think about it. What am I here to do as a photographer? What's this all about? What do I want to say with this image? Choose your composition tool. Choose your lighting. And use your equipment as a tool not as something to get all geeked out about but as a tool to communicate your message alrighty I hope that helps and we're gonna look at some of your photographs right Jared here we yes, are we are uh, this one this first one is from Steve uh, who is joining us from Chicago I believe so I'm gonna guess that this was taken in Chicago as well Steve Bravo, right off the top. What do you guys get? Isn't that a cool image? I don't even have to like dissect it to see how much I like it. There's so many interesting parts to it. I love the, the structure, the shadows, the frame. You did a great job of getting this guy framed in that uh, right-hand triangle there. And then as a bonus, you got the starburst. I mean, that... That is just a total bonus, but it all fits together really beautifully. And as a black and white, bam, 
Good job. You're using a lot of different composition tools there all at once. You know, you've got you've got angles and you've got and by the way, these things do fit together. Just it's like cooking. You don't just cook with one one dish, right? You 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 know, you have a chicken dish and then you have your vegetables and and you, the way you plate it all fits together. Think of that when you're composing, you've got a lot of different dishes that you can combine here. But Steve, this is bravo. Well done. How did you process the black and white? That's my only question I have. Uh, let, let me know. But you're, uh, you're right on there, right on the money. Well done. Because you had to wait it out. You had to wait for that guy to walk into the frame you also had to position yourself just right for that starburst to not get lost. You you really composed this image. That is not a snapshot. That is a composed image. Okay. So let us know in the chat. I'm just curious how you process the black and white. All right. Bravo. All right. Who's next? Uh, this one is from uh, Benjara, the Nomad. I hope I said that correctly. Um, and they submitted several images, and this was one that stood out to me. Steve, I'm just going to go back. Let's just go back. My, oh, only, yeah. my, my only comment, and the reason I asked that question, is use Silver Effects Pro because you'll get a very, you'll get some more richness in the blacks. You'll get a stronger dynamic range, and that'll just help it pop. And you, he says, I almost walked away before the guy showed up. Look at that, man. See? It just goes to show you got to wait. Photography is about timing. Don't, you know, rush, you know? You're in a perfect setting. Like, without the guy in the frame, it really would devalue the image. So, well done, Steve. Try Silver Effects Pro. There's a free version. And I, it'll, just get, it'll just add a little more punch. I, I love that. I use it all the time for lots of reasons. All right, back to Banjara, the Nomad. Interesting how we were seeing, I guess, a haircut looks like. You know, you're just taking a slice of life, an everyday piece of life. But what I like about it, look at the difference of emotions between the woman going about her business with the, the comb or whatever. I assume she's barbering here. But look at the expression. The feeling of, look at its downward cast. You can see the, comp the contrast. She's looking up. There's light on her face. Kind of gives it an optimistic mood. That's a mood line of optimism. Anytime you see lines going up like this, it's a feeling of optimism. His is the exact opposite, looking down. His gaze is looking down. His shoulders are looking down or, or moving down. And his face is in shadow. All those things give us a feeling of something is on this guy's mind. He is not easy. He is not at ease. So you can see it in his face, in his expression. But all those mood lines help tell that story so well done it's and a, it, yeah i i just have a question for benjara um i'm wondering is this a pandemic haircut i'm wondering hmm. um, because it doesn't look like it's necessarily in a like professional setting it looks yeah. almost more like a home setting um so that would add even more uh context to such an image if it is so. Yeah, so it's, a, it's really a well captured in terms of those contrasting moods. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think makes that an, a, an excellent image. Yeah. And the use of light. I mean, you know, just, it's interesting how you have her lit up and he's not, you know, that, that, that helps tell that story. All those elements are really there, you guys as tools to help tell your story. And this image tells a story. Both of these images immediately told me a story. So, bam. Mm -hmm. He's actually getting his hair colored. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. But he's got a worried look on his face. Something's worrying him. 
definitely concerning him. All right, let's Alrighty. move on. Uh, this one is from Joseph. I captured this photo at a museum in Ottawa, Ontario in 2019. Considering the concrete finish of the building, I thought it natural to process this photo in silver effects. Oh, I like the end result. What are your thoughts on the composition and lighting? So just back to um, one more thing on Banjara at home with his parents. That's great. Use your parents as models. Yeah. Annie Leibovitz has taken numerous photographs of her children, her parents, her uh, siblings, you name it. They're there. She wrote in her book, use, your, use the people around you because they can't, they can't complain about you photographing them. So... You know, excellent, bravo. Okay, back to the next one. Silver Effects Pro, I can feel the uh, you know use of that. It's a very interesting image because it's frames within frames, it's leading lines, it's uh, geometry, a number of, yeah, all sorts of, you know, we could list out, sh it's shadowing and uh, contrast. You're using a lot of different elements in this picture. Um, and the thing I like the best is the frame on the left with the two people walking through it. That's where my eye goes. And I consider that to be the, the most dynamic part of this image because they're walking through the frame. I think you've done a great job. Um, I don't really have any critique for you other than just, well done, keep doing more. <laughs> You know, you've, you, you've, you've got the frames within a frame, which I find always interesting, and the dynamic walking. You've even got them with their feet up, which is, Bob Holmes has talked about that. That's your bonus. Uh, somebody says it's too busy. I don't think so. I mean, um, is it too busy? Okay, they didn't say. I don't, I, if we're talking about this, I don't believe it is. I think it's got clean elements in different parts of the image. But my mm -hmm. eye goes immediately, Jared, just highlight that area, the two people on the app, two people walking oh, yeah, on the please. left. To me, that's where my eye goes. The leading lines just kind of bring you to it. And then after that, you kind of wander around and see the rest of it. You might just one or two tiny little things, just burn the, the bottom edge a little bit, darken that a little bit, just so it doesn't pull you out. And then the, the edges at the top, same thing. Very minor edge burning, just tiny little thing. Just because you want, your eye is just going, kind of going for it. Just keep it going in the direction you want it to go. That's very, very, very minor. So don't even consider it. A, it's not even a critique point, just a suggestion. Yeah. Okay, well done. So we got time for one or two more. Yep. We got one or two left. Uh, this is from our good friend, Gare, who we uh, love seeing his work. Even yeah. with the wind and waves, the water looks serene and calm when time floats. Uh, this was a Harman direct positive paper, Linhoff color four by five. Oh my uh, goodness. It was with a 360 millimeter lens F9 and exposed at F 45 and 80, Whoa. 80th 82nd exposure drink to that uh listen that's beyond bravo that's heroic and it paid off it's a beautiful abstract you know because of the long exposure did you hear what he said 80 seconds yep is that right yeah how what was the last time anybody in this chat photograph something at f45 for 80 seconds i have to go back to my view camera days and that's what you're using here so it's a fantastic image and the contrast between all the blur and the and the rocks it's a, it's a really well done image i could see it big on the wall get it printed go to bay photo get a big print get it framed or or you can have it as a, a, a mat that just sits on the wall with no frame around it. Uh, well done. I don't know. I, I have nothing yeah. to add. I think it's just fantastic. 
We love seeing your work here and seeing yeah, how gear. creative you are with your technique. And it is a min minimalist, yes. It's very it's very straightforward, very simple, but it it works beautifully. And thank you for keeping that art form alive with mm -hmm. yeah, what we call analog photography at this point. All right, one more and then we're All going right. To this one's a little bit of a out. cheat. I already know that you've seen it before, but this is a composition show. Uh, oh, yes. and we're going to throw in some colors. So this is by Amir. You've already taken a look at it. Uh, a I bit, guess. so I thought it'd be a great way to end a show on composition because there's a lot of techniques being used here. Yeah, I gave you a big thumbs up on AYP Club. The use of uh, symmetry, uh, patterns, but the more th interesting thing than a pattern is breaking the pattern, and that's what you've done here. So you've got a very patterned field, but the subject on the right which is also a punctuation point breaks the pattern beautifully you've got leading lines symmetry color is a composition tool and the lavender there is a is a whole composition tool in itself uh, i could probably delineate a few more but those are enough and it just works really well and it's better seen bigger than it was in the smaller version because now i can really see um, I'd be interested if you, is this somebody who was with you um, that you had said, hey, walk down the, you know, in between the lavender field, or was this somebody who, you know, just happened by, either way, it doesn't matter, but this is a really beautiful image, well composed, she's on the right, she's not in the center, we're, we're, we're seeing these beautiful patterns of lavender, but bam! That is a, <laughs> that's a really, really, you guys have all done such great work. I'm really proud of you and love seeing your work. Thank you. Um, what a group, huh? AYP Club is quite a group. And I, I invite you guys to really join. If you haven't joined AYP Club, you should be in there and, and participate with your fellow photographers. Everybody in there is somebody who wants to learn and wants to get help from other people and show their work, which is really important. Okay, well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, remember to follow me on Instagram because there's a lot of stuff going on there that we're, we're adding to daily, 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 daily. Um, you know, because I really want that interactivity with you guys. I love hearing from you, and I love seeing your comments here. Um, beyond that, it's so important that you guys stay tuned, because I believe we have some of the best content out there. I really do. I, I'm just being objective about it. I know who these guys are, these people that we interviewed, and these are some of the best photographers in the world. So be sure to subscribe and enable the bell and tell your friends. Let's not keep the AYP a secret any longer. It needs to come out of the secrecy and, you know, be viewed for what it is. Some of the best content you're ever going to find about real photography. Okay, not about the tinkering around with your equipment endlessly. That's not photography. That's just tinkering and being a geek. Real photography is about what you, like I said, you know, your vision what you are all about as a photographer, what you want to tell, the stories that you tell, like exa the examples that we saw this morning. So help me, help me help you, okay? Get on my Instagram and follow me there and also subscribe to YouTube. But will you help me tell other people? I can't do this alone. I need your help, okay? Help is a really important tool. I'm here to help you. You help me, and we will, like, win together all right so i want you guys to get out i want you to make sure you're photographing and thank you uh let's put that on the screen there <laughs> and uh, the show is a gem hidden gem actually and i agree more people yeah I, i'm i decided that's it on the hidden hiddenness of it we're gonna let the lid off you guys, you know how that's going to happen? By you. If you tell two people and they tell two people, 
this thing will explode. So don't keep it to yourself. I really need your help. Okay? I'm not kidding. Something I decided last night. I need to start asking these guys because I know you're getting help. I don't have to ask you. I know it's helping you. So you help me help you. So if I haven't already said it, go to my Instagram, subscribe to the channel, leave your likes, comments, tell your friends, share. And that last but not least, remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Stay creative, you guys. We'll see you next week. See you on Instagram in the meantime.